A good number of years ago, uh, I was in the Garda station in Thurlis, nothing illegal. Uh, I was probably paying for a provisional license or something. And so while I was in there, uh, one of the guards came out to me and he said, um, would you mind giving us a hand? And I said, to do what? Uh, and he said, we need someone to, to join us for, for a lineup, right? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'd love that. <laughs> That'd be awesome, I could be a criminal. That's also, so I went into this, this room, there's a, there's a one, one directional glass, shiny glass thing, window, and then the, you know, the usual, you've, you've seen it in all the movies, you know, the, the wall behind you with the five foot five, six foot, six foot four, all the, all the different markings, and I was standing there going, yeah, I could be a criminal. <laughs> turn left, yeah, I could, I could be a criminal. <laughs> turn right, and then uh, number three, I was number three. So like, number three, I was like, yeah. <laughs> they said, um, your mom's outside waiting for you. She said, you, you have to leave now. Um, she, don't, she doesn't want to be late for mass. So it just <laughs> completely burst my, I could be a criminal bubble. And, uh, and I said, all right, lads, take care. So <laughs> and uh, hung my head in shame and left the line out. Uh, but it was it just reminded me of this, this thing. As long as we, we want to be something we're not. We want to give the impression that we're something that we're not. Do you know, we give the impression I could, I could be a criminal. Of course, good. Uh, you want to give this, this idea, this persona, you know, this, this projection of, of, of who we think we are or who we'd like to be. And sometimes we do this to other people as well. We'd like them to be something they're not. We hope that another person is, is, is a certain way uh, or would do a certain thing for us. And the same can happen with God. I hope God is a certain way. So as opposed to kind of accepting how God reveals himself to me, I tell God how I want him to be. I want God, I want you to be this, like this, right? I want God, I want, you to do, I want you to be like a genie, right? That's really helpful, because for genies, you don't have to do anything. You just rub the little lampy thing, out pops Will Smith, and um, gives you whatever you want. Isn't that how it works? Something like that, okay? Uh, that's really handy, or like a kind of a vending machine God, <clears throat> where Lord, I prayed a full Our Father. Give me what I'm asking for. It should pop out now. Man, I popped in my Our Father. <clears throat> or we want God to be our insurance policy, okay? So if anything goes wrong, God will take care of me, you know what I mean? So I can kind of just tip into Mass every now and again just to kind of keep some sort of a kind of a, you know, pay my insurance premium every year, and then if I live a bad life or anything goes wrong or something like that, God will take care of me because he's merciful, all right? Or, or then there's the, maybe I, maybe I might even want God to be kind of punishing, Someone has hurt me. God is going to get back at them a hundred times over. He's going to punish them for all they've done. So all these kind of ideas that we can have of God, I want God to be a certain way. I want God to be punishing. I want him to be a genie or a vending machine. And we kind of forget this, this, this all-important, absolutely crucial mystery of our faith is that God actually has an identity. Right? God is a certain way. It, it, the way God is isn't dependent on our belief. That might sound complicated. Okay, <clears throat> so um, if we pick any random person here, the guy who did the second reading there, his name is Paulus. Now you could look at him and say, well look, but judging by the height of him, he's, he's 19 years of age. I'd say he's into skydiving, probably a bit of windsurfing. Um, I'd say he's from Sligo, judging by that accent. And you can like, come, come together, put all these kind of theories as to who you think he is. And you may even do a survey, and maybe the majority of you think he's from Sligo. And those watching the live stream, they may all write in, so you're definitely Sligo, it's definitely a Sligo accent, right? And just because everyone thinks a certain thing doesn't change the fact that he's living in Limerick, but from Holland, right? But everyone may think he's from Sligo. It doesn't make a difference how many people think he's from Sligo, he's from Holland, living in Limerick. Hence Limerick accent with a slight smattering dusting of, of Dutchness every now and again. Okay, so it may be that a lot of people think God is a certain way. It doesn't make God that way. Because if we can change God, if we can make God a certain way by our minds, what does that make us? God, <laughs> right? If you can make God with your mind, that makes you God. So if lots of us kind of get together in the church and we kind of make God a certain way, it doesn't make him that way. Otherwise, we're creating God. So it's a really simple principle, right? 
So we don't create God. If, 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 so it doesn't actually matter how many people believe in the Eucharist to make it. It's like, it's not, if everyone believes it's the Eucharist, then it's the Eucharist. If no one believes it's the Eucharist, uh, then it's not really the Eucharist anymore. No. If no one believes, it's still the Eucharist. And if everyone believes, but I'm not validly ordained, then it's not the Eucharist. You know what I mean? Our belief doesn't change the reality. Our belief in God doesn't change God. Our belief in God doesn't create God. Okay, so it's, it's, again, this is a really simple principle, but one that uh, you don't see lived out today. In, in schools, kids will often be asked, how do you think God is? And they'll say, well, I think he's this way. Okay, how do you think God is? I think he's that way. How do you think God is? I think he's, oh, good. Let's all write, let's all draw pictures of how we understand God. And isn't that wonderful? It's not wonderful. That's really stupid. Because God is a certain way, and everything else is made up. So the way God is is called divine revelation. He reveals himself. He tells us how he is. He tells us what he wants. And it's, uh, and anything, as I say, anything else, everything else is just make-believe. Okay? So like Elijah, for example. It's, it's a beautiful reading. The, the point of the reading mightn't be so clear, so we'll just do a quick recap. Um, Elijah reads, reaches Horeb, the mountain of God. So he's going to this place to, to, to meet God. He's going to this place of prayer, right? He wants to, to, to be in, in intimacy with the Lord. So he's praying, okay? Then the Lord himself went by. Okay, it's, it's, it's a beautiful image. The Lord himself went by. This is obviously Old Testament, so it's before Jesus, before the incarnation. So the Lord himself went by. There came a mighty wind so strong the mountains... It tore the mountains and shattered the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. Okay? So this great force, this, this like kind of bellowing wind and, and, and the effect of it, the power of it, that wasn't God. Okay? Then there's an earthquake. So the whole earth shakes. But God isn't in the earthquake either. Then there's a fire. So yeah, yeah def, God's definitely in the fire, right? Because God like is powerful and burns stuff. Right? But God isn't in the fire. And then there's the sound of a gentle breeze. And when Elijah hears this, he covers his face with his cloak. Why? That's a sign of reverence. God is in the gentle breeze. So at times maybe we want God to kind of march in and destroy our enemies and, and get exact vengeance on, our, on, on our, the perpetrators of, of any hurt that we've experienced. But that's not God. Maybe we want him to be a genie, but that's, that's not him. Maybe we want him to be a vending machine. That's not, maybe we want him to be a, our insurance policy to get us into heaven if things go wrong. That's not him. Our God is gentle. And then Revelation continues that our God is a father. Our God is a father. So a person that we can have, he's a person, right? A divine person, but a person nonetheless. A person that we can have a relationship with. And then Re Revelation goes even further. Where he's not just uh, a father, but he's, he's a community. He's a family. He's a trinity. So the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And they're, they're this, this divine family, this divine community. One God, one, na one divine nature. One God, but three distinct persons. The Father towards whom everything tends. Jesus wants to bring us to the Father and the Holy Spirit that lives within us, drawing us towards God. I mean, that God can actually live in us. It's, it's, it's just astounding. But this is how God reveals himself. This isn't made up by man. This isn't made up by the Thomas Aquinas and who knows who else. Mother Teresa there sitting right in the way, deciding, how she, deciding for herself how God will be. No, this is how God reveals himself. So is this what we believe? Is this what we accept? Or have we filled in the gaps with our own beliefs? Because if we have, that's make-believe. That's not real. God reveals himself. This is who I am. This is my heart. This is what I'm asking you to do. This is how much I love you. As he stretches out his hands and dies on the cross. This is our God. This is why our faith is so, so important. It's not made up by any intellect, human or angelic. It's given to us as a free gift by God. And the Lord asks then, 
do you accept me? This is how I am. Do you love me? And that answer is up to you. It's up to me. That question is, is, is asked of, of us all. Do you love me? And on the answer to that question hangs eternity. Do you love me?